Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel CapTech Pro. In previous video, we have seen how to set up a logical network. Then we created the IP pool and later on we created a gateway for our Hyper-V host. Now on this video, we'll see how to create a port profiles. After creating the port profiles, we'll see how we can set up the logical switches. And after that, we'll assign the logical switch to our Hyper-V host. So guys, without any delay, let's get started. Okay friends, so now we are on our lab environment and I have logged into my virtual machine manager. Now before we proceed to create a port profile and logical switches, let us understand what are port profiles and logical switches. So guys in virtual machine manager, port profiles and logical switches, they both function as a collections for the configuration setting for network adapters across multiple virtualization hosts. Rather than we have to configure the properties of each network adapter individually, we can apply the configuration information in the logical switches and the port profiles. Let me give you an example. Like if we want to configure certain network adapters, for that they are reserved for use in managing the virtualization host. So to accomplish this, we can create a logical switch. Then we can add the host management port profile to the logical switch. And then we can assign the logical switch to each adapter that would be used for our virtualization host management. Now let's first create the port profiles. So we'll click on fabric. Now on networking part, we'll click on port profiles. So you can see 11 port profiles are pre-created. You can see all of them. Now let's create a new port profile. So we'll right click on port profile and now we'll click on create Hyper-V port profile. So we'll give the name to our Hyper-V port profile. So guys, I have given the name Canada profile. And now in the type of Hyper-V port profile, we'll select virtual network adapter port profile will not select the uplink port profile. We can opt this option when we have lots of switches in our network. So as of now, we have only one network adapter. So we'll click on virtual network adapter port profile. Now I will click on next. So now in the select offload settings for the virtual network adapter port profile, you can see there are so many adapter port profiles. So we'll discuss them in detail. So as of now, we'll check first two, which is enable virtual machine manager queue. And the second is enable IPsec task offloading and then we'll click on next. So friends, now we have to select the security settings for our virtual network adapter port profile. So you can see right now all security settings are disabled. So first is allow Mac spoofing. So if we will select this, it will allow a virtual machine to change the source Mac address in outgoing packets to an address that is not assigned to the virtual machine. This setting is to be enabled for our load balancer virtual appliance, right? The second is enable DHCP guard. If you will enable this, it will help us to protect against a malicious virtual machine that represent itself as a DHCP server. Then the third is allow router guard. It will help you to protect against the advertisement and redirection message that are sent sent by a unauthorized virtual machines and also that represent itself as a router. Then we have a allow guest teaming. So if you will check this, it will allow you to team the virtual network adapter with other network adapters, which are connected to a same switch. Then we have a allow IEEE priority tagging. It will allow you to tag outgoing packets from virtual network adapters. Then we have a allow guest specified IP address. It will affects your virtual machine networks using the network virtualization. So guys will select only allow max spoofing and now we'll click on next. Now we have to select the bandwidth settings for our virtual network adapter port profile. So you can specify how the network adapter utilize your network bandwidth. So then we have a minimum bandwidth, maximum bandwidth and the minimum bandwidth weight. Minimum bandwidth is always the minimum amount will go with a network adapter. Then we have a maximum bandwidth. If we have a number of network switch, so we can select our maximum bandwidth from here. After that, we have a minimum bandwidth weight. It is basically used for the network load balancing. So as of now, we can skip all this and we'll simply click on next. And now let's create our port profile. So we'll click on finish. So our Hyper-V switch port profile is created. Let me close it. And you can see our port profile is there. Now let's open a pre-created port profile. So we'll click on high bandwidth and let's click on offload settings. So as you can see, first two offload settings is created. Now let's click on bandwidth setting. So the minimum bandwidth weight is five. So now let me close it. So now let's open another port profile. So we'll open medium bandwidth, click on offload settings. Same here. You can see 
only top two offload setting is selected now let's click on security settings you can see nothing is selected in the bandwidth setting the minimum bandwidth weight is set to three let's cancel let's open one more so i will open low bandwidth adapter so in offload settings again top two offload settings is selected in security settings nothing is selected and in bandwidth setting you can see minimum bandwidth weight is set to one now let's open one more which is live migration it's required a maximum bandwidth so first let's click on bandwidth and you can see minimum bandwidth weight is 40 so you can see as i have said like we need a maximum bandwidth now in the security setting again nothing is selected in offload settings again upper two offload setting is selected so friends in offload settings the first feature is enable virtual machine queue so what why we have selected this because it requires a physical network adapter that supports this feature so basically we are we will be using the physical network adapter that that's why we have selected this option and the second is enable ipsec task offloading this feature is basically used in vpn it supports a physical network adapter that's why we have selected this and the guest operating system is also required to offload the ipsec task and it supports a physical network adapter and the guest operating system so we that's why we are going with the first two option and the rest option is used when we are doing the clustering and we want to do the load balancing so then we can use the rest three options so we'll discuss these three options later on when we'll configure the cluster and the network load balancing so let me cancel it so friends we have successfully created the port profiles now in order to apply these port profiles we have to create a logical switch so let's click on logical switch we'll right click on it and, and now we'll create a logical switch so we'll select this now in getting starting with the logical switch you can read about the logical switch so basically a logical switch contains the configuration information which controls the behavior of virtual switches across host in your data center so we'll click on next now we'll give the name to our new logical switch so we'll give the name canada switch after giving the name if we have a multiple network adapters so we can select any teaming option so as of now we don't have lots of network adapter so we'll go with by default which is no uplink team now we'll click on next now we have to specify the logical switch settings so there is a minimum bandwidth mode so we'll go with the weight and now if you have a mul multiple network adapters in your environment you can check the box of enable single root io virtualization so we'll click on next and now in the choose the extension you want to use with the logical switch so we'll select the virtual switch extension which is already selected by default now we'll click on next now in specify the port classification for virtual port parts for this logical switch we'll click on add to add our virtual port now in port classification we'll click on browse and let's select the medium bandwidth and then click on ok now we'll check the box of include a hyper v virtual network adapter port profile in the virtual port we'll check this again click on browse and let's again select the same one which is medium bandwidth adapter we'll click on ok after selecting both of these now we'll click on ok now we'll click on next now in the uplinks we'll add our uplink we'll click on add and we'll select new uplink port profile so we'll give the name to our uplinks so we have given the name to our uplinks which is canada uplink so now if we were doing the load balancing we have selected the load balancing algorithm then in the network side let's check our canada subnet and now if we have windows server 2012 then we have to select the option of enable hyper v network virtualization so as of now we are using the virtual machine manager 2019 so we'll so we'll leave it by as it is now we'll click on next now in the confirm the settings we'll click on finish so friends we have successfully created our logical switch now it's time to add our logical switch to our host group canada so we'll click on canada and now this is my server machine this machine does not have any logical switch so i have added this host machine to my group canada and the, our server one is now moved to singapore so i have moved our server one to singapore now so in canada to add a logical switch we'll select our host machine we'll right click over here and now i will go to properties now in the properties of server 01 we'll click on virtual switches so as of now we don't have any virtual switch so we'll click on new virtual switch now we'll add our new logical switch so as you can see 
our Canada switch is automatically selected now. So now we'll click on OK. So it will prompt a message that this may result in losing the connectivity. So we'll click on yes. So our logical switch is now added to our host. So now let's check our logical switch is attached to our server 01 captechpro.online or not. So we'll right click over here and we'll click on view networking. So in view networking, you can see server 01 has two network adapters and our Canada network is now associated with our server 01 captechpro.online. So guys, that's conclude our video demonstration. We have seen how to create a new port profile. After creating the port profile, we, we have set up our logical switch and then we have attached that logical switch with our host group Canada and inside Canada, we have our server 01, which I have added just now. So we have attached the logical network to our host group. For more informative videos, you can check my other video links on the screen and subscribe my channel and press bell icon for more upcoming videos. I will see you guys in next video.